everyone, I'm Sarah Levon and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Before I get started, don't forget to subscribe down below. But today, I am going to show you all of the things that I bring with me to a birth. This is my what's in my doula bag. Let's get started. products is I'm also not a big product person. I know that there are people out there that like the products and especially if you're a new doula it feels comforting to have some of these supplies but really as a doula what people are looking for is your compassion, your empathy, your support and then your knowledge to help them to know how to cope, what positions are right, what breathing techniques. But are there things that I do find helpful and that I have used at births? Yes. Do I use all of these at all births? Not at all. So you doulas out there, hopefully this will help you. For you pregnant people out there, you can ask your doula what they bring and then you can supplement what they don't bring to your birth. So I do say that my hands are the most important tool. Sometimes I don't even open my bag up and I have like this massive bag of stuff constantly with me. I am prepared for like an overnight stay. So a lot of the stuff in there are like my own toiletries, an extra change of clothes, extra underwear. Different changes socks just because I like I get weird about being in the hospital with different socks on and then like phone charger for me I'm gonna start out though with the things that I use at almost every birth like I know I say I don't use everything at every birth But I probably use these the most first of all is gonna be coconut oil or some sort of massage oil I love massage for labor. I find it super helpful for a lot of mamas Not everybody is into touch, but if you're into touch then massage and labor can be very, very helpful. So fractionated coconut oil is my favorite for massage. I also like almond oil, although it does have a little bit of a smell. Fractionated coconut oil is um, liquid. It's not like coconut oil that you get at Trader Joe's that's hard and you have to like warm up and then smells like coconut. I will squirt some coconut oil in something like this so I'm not bringing like the whole bottle along with me. Plus then it's single use. And this is, I got off of Amazon, it's in, in vivo, not in vivo, in vivo, essential fractionated coconut oil therapeutic grade, all natural. 16 fluid ounces. Satisfaction guaranteed. Coconut oil for massage, super, super helpful. Now how I would use this is I take like barely a little bit, rub it together. If there's some essential oils, which I'll do a whole video on essential oils if you want, cause I'm obsessed. You add some like one drop essential oil or you can pre-mix in something like this to have like an essential oil mixture. Then you massage, you can use on your arms, you can use on your legs, on your booty, all that good stuff, massage away. I will just give you a little snippet into essential oils if I'm talking about like the one holy grail essential oil that I am obsessed with for labor and birth by doTERRA and it is called Balance. It's only 20 bucks wholesale so you'd have to get a wholesale account for that but doTERRA Balance is my absolutely favorite thing in the world. So they call it the grounding blend. It is not ingestible, P.S., and it's leaking all over my hands. Whoo! About to be real grounded. Balance is their grounding blend, meaning it's like emotionally stabilizing. It smells, I got a lot. Very earthy. What's in it is there's spruce leaf oil, hoe leaf oil, frankincense, blue tansy, blue chamomile, and osmanthus flower extract. That's really interesting. What I smell mostly is like the woods. A lot of times, pregnant people are really sensitive to different smells. What I find with balance is that everybody loves it. They're like, oh, what is that? Oh my God, I'm obsessed. And literally it's everywhere now. Balance agrees with everybody. It is like my go-to calming, anxiety regulating oil for labor and birth. My backups are Serenity. I like Elevation, although it does have um, clary sage in it, which can make your contraction stronger. It's called the Joyful Blend, so it's like citrusy, but like uplifting citrusy. And then my go-to diffuser blend, which I have my diffuser here, that is one of my items. I don't usually bring to a birth, but I encourage people to bring to a birth if their hospital allows it, um, to make the room smell like the spa. My two favorite like essential oils for diffuser combination are peppermint and wild orange. I find that they're like energizing, but they're also kind of calming. Like the peppermint has this like calming effect. Peppermint's also good for nausea. I wasn't even going to talk about essential oils, but I couldn't help myself. So here we go. Balance by doTERRA is my favorite holy grail best in the world. If you want to order, I, I'll link my like stuff down below and you can just go on doTERRA and buy it yourself. Um, you can also get fractionated coconut oil there. You can get diffusers there, all that good stuff. That's enough about oils. But I will say that oils slash massage, that kind of like... This is really good for labor and one of my like probably top fives. The second thing that is like, I actually have an extra in my glove compartment right now because I'm a little bit paranoid of going to a birth without them. This sounds really crazy, but are my 
string lights. So these are just like copper string lights. I got them for my sister's bachelorette party back in the day, and who knew, they'd turn into like labor and birth supplies. Anything for the labor mood is going to be really good to bring with you if you're a labor support person, or as you anticipate setting the mood for your birth, or if you're a doula, guys, this is where it's at, okay? Especially in the hospital setting, the hospital can feel very sterile, really bright. Most hospital rooms have a dimmer switch for labor and delivery. If they don't, turn off all the lights and set the mood yourself. So what I do with these, and this is really like a trade secret because this is like a Sarah special here that I'm giving away. They're battery operated so they can go anywhere. I remember I recently I put these in the bathroom. I was like getting her, her bath ready, so of course, a little bit of essential oil. And then I like stuck this on the countertop and then put use tape to put it on the wall and literally like just like across the wall in the bathroom. I do this in my labor rooms and it is the perfect amount of mood light to set the mood for the room. And I love that they're battery operated because then you can really go anywhere with them. They're not too much light, but they're just enough that like you can still function and see and you're not like walking around like a blind person in the room. One of these is usually enough. I have two in my bag in case we want a little bit more light. This I would say is like probably my favorite thing as far as lighting goes, um, but I have two other things that I'm really obsessed with. I'm trying to hurry, guys. The other thing that I'd use for setting the mood for lighting are going to be something like this. This is my Himalayan pink salt lamp. I love it. Now, mind you, it's a little bit cumbersome to bring with you to a labor and birth because it's it's like, like it's like legit salt. This mood lighting, I'll turn down the light. Actually, let me do it right now. When I turn down the lights like this, you can see that it just creates this like perfect glow to the mood. The difference is you do have to plug this in compared to the string lights or whatever. So the string lights are good for portable, but you can like put this in the corner and it's like this soothing ha of the room. It is a little bit heavy, so that's kind of annoying to bring back and forth from the hospital. But mind you, you also to have in your house, I keep this guy in my bedroom next to my bed. And so the cool part about the Levoit, Levoit one that I have here is it has like a touch screw thing. So for breastfeeding in the middle of the night, this is the best. You need something like this that like super simple. You're in the dark, baby stirs, you're like, ah, and then, or this, <laughs> and then you have just enough lighting that it's not this like bright yellow light that wakes you up. And then you can still see what you're doing, but it keeps the mood to keep it really like nice and calm. It's not waking up your partner if they're not waking up. And then guess what? There's a dimmer on this thing, which I didn't even know until, hold on, my hands are all oily. See? <gasps> Come on. Oh! So you can dim it where it's like barely anything and you feel like you're in like Disneyland in the little like Indiana Jones or something, or you can turn it up to give you like some more light. I really like it. I think it's really cool. It adds to mood and ambiance. It's portable enough. Definitely an option for your labor and birth. The other option is flameless candles for your hospital room. Now, when you're at home, you can light real candles at home and they'll add some like ambiance and smell. In the hospital, like these ones actually flicker. I don't know if you can tell. And to have these around different places, like that and then music, which is another essential item. I don't usually bring this for my client. I usually tell them to bring it themselves. Um, but to have a portable speaker that is Bluetooth that can just go wherever you go, whether that be the bathroom or the room or whatever, that then you set the music and then you have the low lighting with your little twinkle lights and your salt lamp and your candles everywhere and all of a sudden you just have like the perfect labor mood. So then like some basic comfort items for her would be chapstick. Now mind you, this isn't one, one time use. So like I'm not using this on myself and then passing it to her and then to somebody else. But one of the tricks I have, because if she's really dry and she doesn't bring it herself, Women, bring a chapstick. Honestly, it's so simple, but like your lips get dry when you're in labor, is I will scrape off some of the top into the cap and then use like either like a Q-tip from the hospital or even just her finger. Have her use some hand sanitizer first. Use a finger and then you can use the, you can use like, more than one person can use it that way. Help them with their dry lips. Simple things make all the difference in labor. I have a an eye mask that is washable. I wash between every use, or I've had some disposable ones too, like I got at the dollar store or were given to me at a hospital when I was there. Um, so I have those and I'll just give them to them. Sometimes like if they're induced or after they get their epidural, there's people coming and going, they're turning on the lights, you throw one of these guys on and then 
they're like knocked out for the afternoon and they can sleep so much better. All the interruptions in the hospital are real, you know? So this helps to limit the interruptions. The other thing to throw in your bag, ladies, are earplugs. You can always use like gauze, like if I if she's needing earplugs and I don't have them, which I don't carry earplugs, disposable ones. It's an idea, but it might be kind of overdoing it, doulas. You have to lug all this crap around. So grab like a gauze and then wad it up and put it in your ears. That also can help her to get a nice night's sleep because sleep is important. Hot and cold for labor and birth is super helpful. Now, when you're at home, you can use like a a heated heating pad, like one that plugs in, but for portability purposes. Now in the hospital, they may not let you warm them up in the microwave, but if I'm at somebody's home for my doula bag, I have this rice sock, which I made myself. I'm so crafty, but I actually like the Prego pouch more. So the Prego pouch, and I think I actually have a coupon code for you down below for this one because I know the lady, she's the coolest woman, she's a mom herself, and found that with a rice pack, so there's rice in this, if this got wet or soiled and I wanted to wash it, it like the rice explodes and you can't really wash it. So this for me is like one time use for my house. If you have one yourself, you can use it when you're at home, but the Prego pouch is so cool. First of all, it's like a cool material. I don't know if you can see that. You can hear it. It's actually cherry pits. So cherry pits, unbeknownst to me, actually hold heat better than rice does. And for tactile people, hello, this is like crack. And it sounds like a rainmaker. I'm obsessed. Now, the original purpose of the Prego pouch is actually for breastfeeding. So, fun fact of the day, a little bonus for you, is that it, one way to increase your milk supply is to heat the breast before you pump or before you feed. So you throw this in the microwave, cherry pits can't really overheat either, which is pretty awesome. So you put it on your breast for a few minutes and then you feed or pump and that helps with your milk supply. So that's originally what it was there for, but I use mine for labor and it doubles in half. You can put it on the forehead, you can put it in the uh, freezer to be cold or for your neck. It's kind of one of those like bonus type things. You can get them, I think they're on Amazon. You can go to pregopouch.com. I'll link all this ish down below, the ones that I can. Another essential item, this is super simple, but gum, trust me, look at how much of this gum of this like large thing, this has all been used at births, whether that be to give to a partner or to myself. I drink coffee all throughout. I always have a cold brew in my bag, although mind you, on my way to the hospital or at the hospital or wherever, we're getting coffee if I'm gonna be up for the next like 24, 36 hours. I have a backup in my bag. I've used this to give to dads if they're like, you know, awake all night and really needing a pick me up. The other one that's not pictured here is Crystal Light it has these strawberry caffeinated Crystal Light packets that I also have in my purse which I don't have here, but they're really yummy and that's my favorite flavor anyway. And they're also another little pick me up caffeinated thing to keep you awake. So then you're drinking coffee and then you're like sitting there breathing in her face, ha, ah, and she's like, oh, you smell. So always have some gum. I have multiple flavors in my bag. Save your mamas of bad breath. Snacks for myself and snacks for the partner. For me, sustenance is key. These are our X bars. I like the blueberry one more. This one's the mint one and it's like, Kind of is weird to me. But so RX bars or nuts, I always have like almonds in my bag or I'll pack like a meal. I don't usually eat in front of the mamas, especially if they're in the hospital and they don't let them eat. That's torture. So you're sneaking it in the back room. She's in the bathroom. You're like, you need the energy. You got to fill your tank. That goes for the partner and support people too. Bring some snacks. I am so not giving you my top five in order. So I'll point those out at the end. How about kind of just I'll fly by the seat of my pants here. Another essential item for at home laboring with people, I don't usually provide, but I su suggest that somebody has, is a water bottle that has a straw with it. The straw is essential. I have straws in my bag that I have occasionally pulled out, um, but the idea is for her to be able to quick sip to stay hydrated through labor, that's gonna be really important for her. The goal is to be drinking. This is totally, again, another bonus. These Concentrace Trace Minerals. These are soluble, vegan, gluten-free liquimins. They're calling it. That's funny. So the idea is that you put 10 drop into your water or your beverage. You're getting like your electrolytes with this. There's a book called The First 40 Days and in there there's this recipe called Labor Aid that I recommend to my mamas of my coaching program and it calls for this. So, you know, talk to your doctor first always. I'm not ever recommending a supplement. Also goes through the aromatherapy. But the idea is that you can add some electrolytes and or make your Labor Aid for your labor and birth. Another thing that I do have in here, this is actually given to me by a client is a fan. It is not uncommon for her to be hot and cold and hot and cold and hot and cold all the time. And so when she's hot, I do use this semi-regularly. The uh, alternative, if you don't have a fan, 
is a piece of paper. Just grab something and fan her. Get inventive. This is totally a bonus. Some of the like comforty items to help with coping. I have a coping with labor class on my website and in there I talk about like counter pressures and um, different types of massage and stuff like that. So when you do counter pressure, sometimes your hand gets tired or there's one place where like I'm really trying to like jab a knuckle in or something and it just would be so much simpler if I had a different massager. So this, ooh. Wow, I'm sore right there. Why am I sore right there? This little like massager guy, I'm sure you can get on Amazon. I think I actually got this one at like TJ Maxx or something, but there's different sizes. This is a big one. I do have a small one somewhere, not here. The point is it's a way to massage and save your thumbs. If, the, if she's really liking like a deep tissue booty massage, you just use this and it's like, you can get in there, okay? And you can do that for hours. The other alternative is something like this. This one I find is better for like a back massage, like if she's really wanting like a legit back massage. Whereas in labor, you're not doing so much of this. I definitely use the this ball type one a little bit more. I don't know if I've actually ever used this one, I'm not gonna lie, but I have it just in case. If she's having like a knot in her back, you want she wants you to work out, then this would be good. Otherwise, this one's just good because you can also just do pressure points. So like on the tailbone or a tennis ball slash I have a like pressure point ball that's a little bit firmer that's like actually for like knots in your back either one of these for a counter pressure if she has one point in her back or hip or something that you're pressing up against and say you get tired you can just use that and then press this way with the ball or if she's wanting to sit up and I can't get behind her I've just put the ball behind her back so that in like in the right spot so she can kind of lean into it and press and give some pressure where she needs the pressure in her usually it's her lower back or pelvis area these are really nice along those lines is a stress ball this I like had in my house I don't know how much I've used this but I do have this in my bag it's an option for you I don't actually bring this with me in my labors but I found it and I thought it would like it's a potential thing for Oh my God, why did I not use this before? Oh, I am adding this to my doula bag. Holy, <laughs> oh well, that's also a way to like give some body to your hair, you know? I hope I, I can't even see myself if I look a hot mess, like bear with it. This I thought was gonna be one of those things where I was like, oh yeah, that's kind of a good idea because I found it, but holy moly, it feels amazing. So anything good touch, can be really helpful for labor and birth, and I'm no joke, like, that's going in my bag right now. That thing is where it's at. Another thing that I have for my mamas is Trader Joe's Organic uh, Lollipops. The idea with a lollipop is just a little pick-me-up. Other doulas will say honey sticks. Honey is more natural, less like, I don't know, is there artificial? Organic cane sugar, organic rice syrup. It's not honey natural, but it's a little sugar pick-me-up, especially a lot of times in the hospital you're not able to eat anything, but you're needing like a little sugar boost or you just need something like flavorful in your mouth. A lollipop is a great option, which, hmm, oh, watermelon, where's the watermelon one? The idea is she can suck on it. It's not a hard candy in their mouth. Your anesthesiologist is not gonna want something hard in her mouth. If you were to, God forbid, need an emergency C-section or something and you have a hard candy in your mouth and you accidentally breathe that in, like that's an obstruction in your airway, we don't want that. So this is really great because, mm, mm, I got my little pick-me-up, mm, sugar boost, and then all of a sudden something happens and guess what? You can pass it off. I can just hold it while they're doing whatever they're doing and then they can go back to their sucker whenever they want. Honey sticks are also another option. I have like tea in my bag because that's a clear liquid if your hospital allows for clear liquids. I feel like these are probably like the most used slash the most probably helpful, useful, labory type thing because of the stick. We like the stick. I also bring birth affirmations to my birth. So I made all of these. You can find them online, like lists of birth affirmations. I'm in the process of hand scripting a bunch out for my birth coaching program. When you move to the hospital, a lot of times the hospital feels like this really sterile environment. It's not the most homey. And so not only are you trying to make it homey with the lighting, with the smells, with the mood, with the music, with the support team that you have there. Birth affirmations, I literally just stick on the wall in places that she could see, and then we're good to go. So I surround Around her with the positive. A couple of other things that I have in my bag are a rebozo, which this is like a whole other training, but this is from Antama Shop. A barf bag, you can get these at like CVS, the hospital has them too. And they literally, they just like pop out. So if she's like, ah, I have to throw up, you're like, here, and you got it. And then you just throw it away, and then you pull out another one. And that's what I got. So my top items, I would say that I can't live without are my hands. Duh. My massage oil slash essential oils with balance. My string lights slash mood lighting items. Uh, music, coffee, eh, 
Everything else is a bonus, honestly. It's all extra. Thanks everyone for being with me here today. I hope that gave you a little bit of an insight into my doula world and then also gave you some ideas as to what you could put in your doula bag if you're a doula or what you can bring if you're a support person or a pregnant person to help set your labor mood and help your labor be so much more happy and healthy and positive and the best day of your life. If you want more from me slash you want to take my coping with labor class or my labor class, you can go to bundlebirth.com. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment down below. You know the spiel. Most of the products are going to be linked down below in the description box. And until next time, don't forget to flex and flow, and I will see you very soon. Bye. Flow, but, but, mmm. I will squirt some coconut. <laughs> Ooh. You can put it in the have an accident. Not that you're going to have an accident with gum, but you get what I mean. No, you don't. But maybe you get what I need. Anyway, my little like Bali surprises. Hold on, I need a moment. Oh my gosh. This is, this is, oh, hold on. Oh, <laughs> that is hilarious. I will see you very soon. Talk to you later. Nah.